Hey everybody, Josh RV here with my Michigan mittens, my mitt chickens, if you will, with the Catalina 283 Rear Kitchen Super Slide. Now, this is a model that isn't exactly new. It's a floor plan that's certainly very familiar if you've been looking at RVs for a while. Seems like a lot of builders make something like this. There's got to be a reason for it. Um, I haven't had a chance to put my stamp on Catalina's version, which I'm, I'm really excited to get to do today. It's one of the other things that makes me really excited about being a member of the Bish's RV team, is it just opens up my, the things that I get to touch uh, wide open compared to what I had before. Um, at a glance, again, this is a very familiar model. Every manufacturer has their own little tweak on it. I really, for a stick and tin camper, Catalina's got the look on these things. They have a curb appeal that just don't quit. Um, starts right up front with that just awesome, awesome uh, graphics package on that extra thick aluminum nose sweep right there. But there's a few things on this RV that really speak to me. I love the lighter color interior. I love the 22 updated interior they're doing on these. Um, I didn't dislike the, <laughs> even though this name doesn't sound awesome, old man tan interior decor that they used to have. I really do like this kind of bone palette off white interior that they have going on in here. But more than that. This floor plan gives us big opposing windows. It, uh, Catalina's are six foot nine inside, which is a little taller than some manufacturers. And what that means in English is what I say, it's a, it's a one slide RV that doesn't look and feel like it's only a one slide RV. It feels like it has big opposing super slides on the inside of it because of the, the, the perception of negative space those windows give you. Not to mention being able to look at your campsite instead of like me, the fat, sweaty neighbor without a shirt? <laughs> Give me something like this any day. And here's what I'm talking about. With that big campsite window opposing the big slide windows over here and the big super slide and the taller ceiling and the lighter colors, it makes this look and feel, I think, larger than it actually is. Now that's personal, that's subjective, but that's how I read it. And I also don't know that it translates well to camera. And uh, I, I also like to mention that I'm not using one of these camera lenses where you're like, look at the expansive space. To me, this is deception. When I see stuff like this, I start clicking off of websites because it drives me nuts because it's not a real look at the camper. Now that's just me and obviously I feel a certain way about it, but you do you. Up top here, these have a surprisingly aggressive lighting package well, one of the really kind of cool things about these is that you can still individually click on and off all of the lights. So if you're camping in an area where you have limited battery power or it's late at night or early in the morning and you don't want to be blinded by the light of the sun, well, you don't have to be. Um, over here, we're looking at the optional hide-a-bed sleeper sofa. We'll see that open in just a minute. We're also going to take some time before the video closes up to close the slide to show you what I call the road mode travel accessibility. So hang with me for that if you're kind of curious. First of all, though, this is a rear kitchen. I want to make sure the kitchen gets some serious attention because that is obviously one of the major things that you're looking at in this RV. You have a uh, now standard 12 volt DC compressor fridge over here. The countertops in these, by the way, are all a sealed edge press membrane material. Coachman actually was the originator of that basically in the RV industry. All the cabinetry also is pocket screwed wood into, or screws into wood, not wood into screws. That would be stupid. That wouldn't make sense. You may have noticed the full extension plywood drawers uh, right there in the uh, kitchen area. Um, you may also notice, if you're looking at this floor plan right behind me, right over here, you're looking at it going, ugh, it's a little bit of a neck wrecker entertainment center. Well, take a look at this. One of the kind of cool things about this floor plan is that those uh, recliners right there can pivot. They're not bolted down to the floor. And the TV can pivot both directions. So if you want the TV to face over toward the sofa and the dinette, you can do that. If you want the TV to face over toward the uh, recliners, you can do that. Or you can ignore the TV for a minute and go back to some classic camping. And I'm not judging anybody. Like sometimes, maybe some people camp and they want to watch TV. I think a lot of people, though, say, I don't care about the television. I'm camping. And that's one of the things I love about rear kitchens is because all of the seating faces inward. It's a very social seating arrangement. Um, and... Not a lot of RVs give us that giant picture window overlooking the door side of the RV right there. Uh, that is, uh, again, one of those things. It is nice to be able to watch your campsite and not necessarily the neighbors. 
electric space heat and fireplace over there. That is optional on the uh, Catalina Legacy Editions that we're looking at right here. We haven't heard or seen a lot from its little brother, the Catalina Summit Series, for a while. But just wait. Later this year, we will see them come back, I, I think, in, some, in pretty full force. But overall, what do you think about the color palette, the look, the interior of this thing, the extra height? Like, what do you like? What would you change given the opportunity? And while you're typing that up, I'm going to start yakking about the bathroom. Now, I think most people are going to feel, and, and I'd love your feedback on this, obviously. I don't want to speak for you. Most people are going to say that bathroom is pretty good and a couple little things would really seal the deal on it. So first of all, nice and tall. I'm about 6'3 with my boots on today. Um, my hat keep on a little peach fuzz on top of my head under control. Skylight above the shower. I don't really need it in this one because it is a six foot nine sidewall, which is nice, but it is nice there. There's two things I think, well, three. Three things I think people would say that right there would take it over the top for me, but they are kind of personal and subjective. First of all, I think some people like to see a bigger fan instead of the four inch fart fan. No big deal. I think some people would like to see maybe a towel bar in the wall or something like that. I don't know what structure is in that wall. We could tap around that and maybe find that out for you. And I think some people would feel a porcelain stool would be nice. But again, that, those are three kind of subjective things that not everybody needs or cares about, but I think a lot of people would say are nice. Those are the little kind of things we can do for you. Now, if you take a look at the right hand side of the screen, my leg room here is a long-legged dork. It was okay, but my left foot, I kept, like, I felt like uh, I needed to almost put my foot in the shower to have enough room for my left foot over there. Um, it, was, it wasn't bad, but uh, at the same time, I don't know, it's just right there. By the way, pardon my umbrella, the weather is trash today, and I figured that that was a really good place to put it so that I'm not putting water soaking into the furniture or the wallboards or something in this camper. Trying to respect the fact that one day you might own this and uh, not Bish's RV. Now, when you first look at that over there, it looks like it's going to be a super deep kind of cabinet. And this, don't get me wrong, the storage in here is good. That is definitely, you can put towels, you can put shampoos and body washes and all that stuff in there, certainly. And I love how it goes six foot nine tall from the ceiling to the floor over there. Um, I would say, boy, I sure would like a place for a wastebasket under the sink, blah, 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 the way that I always do. But the thing here is that Catalina gave us a little space around that corner for one. Or, you know what else I thought about? Well, uh, maybe, maybe this would work. Could you use that space to, like, stand up or hang some brooms or anything? Brooms might actually be a little bit too wide for that. I don't know. But you're wondering, maybe, uh, okay, if it's not super deep storage, then what the heck did they do with it? They didn't waste it, is the short answer. That is our bedroom closet. Now, notice I didn't say one of several bedroom closets like you normally see when you get a what I would normally call a bonus closet space like this. Like you've got, you know, your hanging closet space, you've got dresser space there. Because as we pivot, this is one of a select number of Catalina floor plans. This isn't optional. This is just what they do on this one. It does not have the traditional hanging side wardrobe cabinets. And it also does not have the traditional Camp Queen mattress that is 60 by 74 in size. It is still a short mattress at 74 inches, but it is, I guess, what you call a Camp King where it's 70 by 74. It's the size of mattress like Cougar used to use all the time. Now, you can obviously see there's lots of room there. If you want to go with a bigger mattress, you can. And there's like nothing beside the bed. So if you're claustrophobic, this is a really cool thing right there. And this is one of the things I was actually really interested to showcase on this camper and see what do you folks think about this? They only do this in floor plans where there's some extra hanging bedroom storage space available. Um, they, they don't do it necessarily across the board. You can always put a queen in it. You don't have to use the king. Some people might like that it's wide open. Some people might not. Remember, we have more than just Catalinas to offer you at Bish's RV. So if you prefer a more traditional bedroom arrangement, let me know. If you like this, let me know that too. And this is actually a little bit better than what I expected, but it still suffers from the same major drawback of most rear kitchens, which is one of the reasons I call rear kitchens some of the best destination trailers, but not necessarily traveling trailers. Ironically, we are in a class called a travel trailer. 
they didn't extend this peninsula out quite as far as some other brands, which means that, yes, technically there is less counter space here, but I mean, look at this and tell me there's not enough counter space. But what it means is that you can easily walk and pass right through here, which is very cool. That being said, we lose out on two major items that are nice to have when you're traveling. A pantry and a fridge. But! And it is a big but. <laughs> I'm such a child, I'm sorry. The There is a little bit of an option on this one. This has a rack and pinion slide system. What that means in English is it is a slide that it won't get screwed up, you won't break it if you deploy it only partially. Now to get to the pantry, yeah, you gotta open the whole darn thing. But to get to the fridge, kind of like this, if you uh, open it only partially, assuming you have the space to do it uh, at a stop, you can open the fridge enough to like reach an arm in here, grab your hot pockets, and then close the thing up, or you know, whatever you got. I don't know, I don't know what you eat. Hot pocket made sense to me. Anyway, I haven't had a hot pocket in years, but they're always on the tip of my tongue. Probably because the last time I had taste buds on the tip of my tongue is uh, last time I had a hot pocket, because what they don't tell you is the inside of those things has about the temperature rating of the surface of the sun. You'll be hearing from my lawyer's hot pocket. By the way, it just occurred to me that here in the living room, between the recliners and the sofa, you have another one of those uh, small vent fans up here. Um, it is kind of cool that they give you that extra thing for a little bit of extra airflow. Again, it's not a big vent fan. It's cool that they give us a couple vent fans through the RV. And once again, if that is something you're looking to upgrade, that is such an easy thing for us to do. Um, and a little pro tip here for you from your Uncle Josh, the brand that uh, dollar for dollar, pound for pound, I think the best value big vent fan upgrade, it's called the Hangs Vortex series. They, What's cool about them is you don't, like with a true Max Air, you have to totally remove this entire thing right here. With a Hangs, you just install it in the existing housing so we don't have to remove sealant. We don't have to um, break factory work to install a new fan. We just get to utilize what is already there and not have to muck with your warranty as a result. That's one of the things I like about them. Not to mention the fact that they're like 25% of the price of a True Max Air. I love True Max Air fans. I'm not saying these two things are equivalent, but for the money in a camper like this, I'm gonna make it ring on the, uh, the hangs every single day. So like I said when we first began, the uh, Quackman Catalina Legisi Adidion series right here Man, they got the Smex appeal. They have the curve appeal. They just they just look terrific. I love the graphics package on the nose of this thing. It draws me right in every single time. When you're parked at, like, uh, you know, where there's a bunch of other people, there's something about these that really stands out of the crowd. Now, as you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, we are right next to a bunch of fifth wheels, so apologies. I can't get your big broadside uh, picture of one of these right here. Um, but the nose, it looks like it's got electric lighting even when there, it doesn't, you know. Power tongue jack on the front, doing the heavy lifting for us, saving you from getting the tennis elbow. 20 pound propane tanks, which has become pretty normal. There's a few brands that are doing 30s and sticking tin campers, like uh, some of the J flights, but it's kind of hit and miss a little bit. It's not hard to upgrade these to a little bit uh, bigger tanks, by the way. Now you might've noticed right there, handy battery disconnect. And remember the 12 volt fridge on this has its own uh, separate disconnect switch, which is kind of cool. I'll get you a look inside those baggage doors in just a minute. First of all though, just a little notice of a couple things especially in weather like this, where it's gonna freeze and thaw and freeze and thaw, um, that protected hinge on the baggage door right there, it, it prevents that thing from getting all sprung and wore out. Not to mention, you got Pete the dog giving us a perfect eyeball look here at the uh, the magnet hold back on that. I have made no secret of the fact, I do not like speakers mounted all the way up high in the sky. I would really rather those be mounted at the chesticles or lower. That is just my personal preference. Um, Frank, actually, my personal preference is I'd rather get rid of outside speakers entirely and just go with a portable Bluetooth speaker, but that's just me. Stable steps on here. Uh, last I knew, these were still optional on Catalinas. So if you are not a fan or a floor plane like this that is very conducive to park camping where maybe you want to build a deck onto it or something like that, this is a floor plan that can get that job done nicely. Got the little drunken uncle leash latch right there. And one of my favorite things is one of the smallest things on Catalinas. Those silver fender flares right there. Instead of plastic fender flares, which can get brittle and weak and break over time, 
those things just I don't know. It's really hard for those to fail because they're metal. You know, they're they're not plastic. They're not going to get wore out by the sun. Now you saw in our early flyby footage that little baggage door down there actually has a little mini fridge. I'm not going to call this a full-on camp kitchen because it doesn't have a cooker. It doesn't have a uh, uh, a sink or anything like that. But at least you got a little. I call it dad's medicine cabinet outdoors. Keep in mind though, it is 110 powered only, not 12 volt like the fridge inside. So that's not running going down the road. And that's that kind of fair no nonsense info, uh, info I'm going to give you. Now I said it doesn't have any kind of cooker, but it does have itself a propane cooker hooker right there, just in front of that uh, rear stabilizer jack. By the way, little pro tip for you here from Uncle Josh. If you are just going to park this like at a seasonal site, first of all, we can deliver the RV. You don't even got to tow it. Secondly. Put an extra set of jacks like right next to those tires right there and those things aren't hard to install onto the chassis of an rv and it is incredible the stability that will provide you or um do like what salem wildwood does and get those strong arm stabilizer jacks i am a massive massive fan and proponent of those things they do get the job done nicely on the back over here we have our uh very similar to say like the cherokee campers you've got that um what is this? I think 200 pound rated cargo rack here, uh, adorned nicely with the Bish's tire cover. The marketing team on point with the product placement on that one. Um, keep in mind though, that's, that 200 pound capacity is before the uh, tire goes on there. And if the camera's a little herky jerkier than normal, it's because I'm trouncing through snow banks for you to see this thing. So I'm doing my very best um, you know, if you need to see more footage of this, you need some extra photos or something, just let our team know. We're always happy to hop out here. Now, some more uh, detail info here for you. Um, I'm a Scorpio, but you probably didn't care about that. Some more detail info related to the camper. That's probably more what you care about. The roof is walkable. The floor is a 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor. That's pretty normal in stick and tin campers. It also is not ladder capable. Not even aftermarket. There's not backers in that wall. And anytime I get the chance, I like to actually look at it from over here because I think it really helps drive home the point that we do have a full pass-through all the way under the bed here. Now, you might notice we've got ourselves a waterfall over here. Now, if there's one thing I recommend, it's that you don't go chasing waterfalls. Please stick to the rivers and lakes that you're used to. But it does drive home the fact that they are obviously using extended downspouts on their uh, rain gutters up there because otherwise all of that water would be dribbling directly onto the door and basically causing a trickle of water to constantly flood inside of your baggage door if it was left open. So at least in this case, we can leave the door open, get in and out of there, and uh, not have to worry about taking a towel down and drying everything out. So whether you call it a Coachman Catalina Legacy Edition or Quackman Catalina Legacy Adidion, which sounds like you're summoning a demon, demon, by the way. And by the way, I don't know anyone else that calls them that except for me, but hey, I got my own way about things. <laughs> anyway, um, whatever you call it, when you're ready, give us a call and we'd love the chance to help you find your second RV the first time. Maybe this one works. Maybe it's close, but not exactly. Uh, for that, I will leave you some links in the video description where you can see both pricing and availability on this camper as well as things like uh, the Salem Wildwood version of a floor plan like this, the Cherokee version of a floor plan like this, and some other builders who make some very similar things. I might even get a couple laminated rear kitchens in there. We'll just see if I'm feeling wacky. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. When you're ready, we're ready. We're family owned and operated. We don't do hidden dealer fees. We are not fee ridden, as it were. And we'd love to work with you. So take care. Stay safe, have fun. Make sure you like and subscribe, everyone. Appreciate you joining us once again today. Do you see Glenn L. Lee?